Hey everybody and welcome to Wednesday Night Bible Study. Glad that you could join us tonight. Hopefully you got the message earlier in the day that um, we're starting it at 7 o'clock from now on instead of 6.30. Just had a couple of requests to kind of do that. So certainly want to do whatever we can to uh, make this as available as possible. And uh, we're going to start out the uh, study tonight uh, with just a short word of prayer. So if you bow in prayer with me. Lord God, we thank you for tonight. Uh, I just ask that uh, you would now uh, <clears throat> become our teacher, wherever anybody's watching, uh, that we might know your presence. Holy Spirit, we ask that you would be our teacher. In your name, amen. Tonight, we continue our uh, series, if I can call it that, our uh, study on prayer, which we started the first part of January, and tonight will be the last night that we uh, work on prayer or study about prayer, and then uh, next week we'll get back into our Bible study on the Old Testament. So hopefully you can join us for that. Hopefully you've been enjoying these uh, these studies. I think it's important just to take a few minutes out in the middle of the week to uh, recharge our batteries and just uh, rethink some things. The last couple of weeks uh, we've been looking at Paul, as I said, and uh, <clears throat> looking at him, the prayers that he offered up in the book of Ephesians. Just a reminder, uh, Paul was pastor at Ephesians for a few years, uh, left that church uh, in the hands of a very able-bodied young man named Timothy. And uh, now this is a letter that he's writing back to the church in Ephesus. Uh, last week, uh, we did the first part of this passage uh, from Ephesians chapter 3, verses 14 through 19. We'll do the second part tonight. Uh, Ephesians three fourteen through 19, and I'll read the first part that we read last week. For this reason, I kneel before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth derives its name. I pray that out of his glorious riches he may strengthen you with power through his Spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. Uh, you know, if I if you remember um, Paul talking about the fact that every family comes from God on that. And then the part we're going to be looking at tonight on the last couple of verses of that passage. And I pray that you being rooted and established in love may have power together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide, how long, and how high and deep is the love of Christ. And to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Uh, as I read this passage, I think back, um, I wasn't the best student in high school, I'll, I'll, I'll be honest with you on that. I, I like to say I worked hard for every seed that I got, and, and what I mean by that is I worked hard at avoiding studying, I worked hard at avoiding homework, I worked hard at uh, not uh, preparing for tests. Um, <clears throat> wish that I had done differently? Yes. Um, then I went to college and, and uh, almost graduated with honors. Uh, I had a little bit different motivation by then. But one of the things I remember in high school was um, dreading going to certain classes because I wasn't ready to go to those classes. I, I didn't know, I didn't prepare well. And uh, it, it was very difficult for me. Um, when I think of that, um, I think about the, uh, the problem of prayer. Um, I think sometimes uh, we don't pray because uh, it can be a lot of things. We think we're too busy, but we make time for what's important. Uh, we may ha not have time to pray, but we have time to play video games, or we have time to go ice fishing, or we have time to watch football, but we don't have time to pray. Uh, I don't even buy that excuse for me, sorry. Um, sometimes we don't want to pray, or we, we come up with other excuses. I think sometimes we don't want to pray because... We don't really want to go to God. Uh, we may be ashamed of how we feel. We may be ashamed of uh, how we, what we haven't done or what we have done, uh, and we don't really want to go to Him. And and so when Paul's praying here, he's he's encouraging us to go to prayer because God is a God of love. God is a God of grace and mercy. Uh, as we talked about in Zion a few weeks ago, he, he's an ever loving, fa uh, everlasting father, a loving father. He wants to wrap his arms around us. So Paul says, <clears throat> I pray that you be rooted and established in love may they have power. When I think of that passage, I think that little phrase, rooted in love, uh, what I got thinking about is uh, healthy plants continue to grow roots. Have you ever thought about that? 
the older a plant grows, go, the older a plant gets, the more those roots grow. Uh, that's one reason why uh, the old trees that we see are just uh, solid because those roots have been growing for maybe a hundred years. And uh, it takes an awful lot to take a tree down by the roots. It happens, but it takes an awful lot to take a tree down by the roots because that root system is so intact, so ingrained in, in the ground. And Paul says that we need to grow like roots, put our roots down. Um, the the very strength of a plant rests in its root system. Think about that. The, the stronger the root system, the stronger the plant will be. So Paul is saying, when you pray for others, I think Paul is saying here, when you pray for others, don't pray that they'll behave. Uh, don't pray that uh, they'll do the right things. Instead, what Paul is saying is pray, excuse me a second here, got a little tech thing going on. Uh, pray that they'll love Jesus more. And the reason for that, I think, comes from John chapter 14, verse 15, where Jesus says, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. And when I grow up reading that verse, I always thought what that verse meant was, that if you love me, you'll show it by obeying me. And there's a certain amount of truth to that. But I think in reality, what Jesus is saying here is, the more you fall in love with me, the more you'll obey me. Uh, think about it in human terms of relationship. If you love somebody, uh, you're going to want to please them. And the more you love them, the deeper your love is for them. The more uh, you want to please them. And the more you want, you know, so when Jesus says you'll obey me, it's not the obedience kind of thing like, you know, do this or you're going to get your hand slapped. But it's more like you'll follow the things that I say. You'll follow the words that I have because you love me so much. So what Paul is saying here. Um, I believe, is he's praying for the people in Ephesus. He's not praying that they'll, they'll be strong in their faith. He's not praying that they'll obey God. They're not pray, he's not praying that they will have good, gov uh, good uh, programs to reach out to the community. He's praying that they'll fall in love with Jesus. That they'll, and not only just fall in love with him, because falling in love has this implication to me anyway of uh, you fall in love, you fall out of love. But falling in love with Jesus in the sense of uh, every day you love him more. You know, Lamentation says that uh, God's love for us is new every morning. Uh, what Paul is saying here is our love for Jesus should be more every morning. And we should be rooted. We should be established in that love. So when you're praying for other people, I think what we need to do is to pray that they'll love Jesus more. When you pray for people that uh, are obviously struggling with judgmentalism or they're obviously struggling with some big sin, um, <clears throat> it's easy to want to pray and say, God keep them from drinking or God keep them from porn, things like that. Again, nothing wrong with that. But maybe what we should pray more, especially for those that are believers, is Jesus, show them your love. Show them your love. Show you my love. Show me your love. Help me to grow deeper in love with you so I can love other people. So I think that's what Paul is saying here. The second thing that he says here is that he wants us to grow in power. Uh, he says uh, that you may have power together with all the Lord's holy people. Uh, so what Paul is saying here is that he wants us to grow in that power. And the power comes from our love of Jesus. Um, the power doesn't come from obedience. Power doesn't come from uh, just doing what we're told. The power comes because of our deep love for him. And that a power allows us to uh, see our love for Jesus. It also allows us to see the deception of the enemy. Uh, so when Paul is saying, I pray that you'll have love for Jesus and power, those two things go hand in hand. The more you love Jesus, the more power you're going to have to resist temptation. So if you're struggling, for example, uh, with a sin, whatever that sin happens to be, and frankly, I don't care what it is. God does, but I don't. When you're struggling with that sin, you know, a lot of times what we say is, Lord, help me not to do this, or Lord, help me not to do that. But maybe what we should pray is, Lord, help me love you more. Help me love you more. Uh, I love Jesus, but I have to admit that there's times when I love my wife and I sometimes think I love my wife more than Jesus. That should never happen. 
And so what I've started to pray, to be quite honest with you, is, Lord, help me to love you more than I love her. Now, the flip side of that is the more I love Jesus, the more she's going to sense my love for her, too. So, you know, everybody wins. But when you pray, and I think that's one of the reasons for the Lord's Prayer starting out the way it does of worshiping God. When you pray, try to start by praying that you'll love Jesus more. When you pray for others, especially for believers, pray that they will love Jesus more. So I think that's what we need to do. The set, and then the third thing that Paul talks about is that when we grow in love for Christ, uh, our roots will go deep down into his word. And by the way, the only way you're going to grow closer to Jesus is to get into his word and to study his word, not just a verse a day, which is a good start, but to really get into his word, to pray, to ask him to help you love him more but then to pray for others. But when you do that, then you start to have the power. You have the power to sense his will. You have the power to sense his direction. You have the power to uh, resist Satan. You have the power to uh, grow in your own faith more. It's a, it's almost like a perpetual motion kind of thing. The more you love him, the stronger you get, the stronger you get, the more you love him. And it just keeps going on and on and on and snowballing uh, upon itself. So when you do that, then Paul says that you will be filled with the fullness of God. Be filled with the fullness of God. You know, I think I shared this illustration a couple of weeks ago, but back uh, when I was growing up, Folgers Coffee or Maxwell House, I think it was, had this uh, commercial. And they would say their their tagline was a cup and a half of flavor. And they would show somebody pouring coffee into a cup and the coffee would miraculously rise up above the cup a few inches showing that there was so much flavor that the cup could not contain it and i think that's what paul is saying here the more you love jesus the more power you will have and the more power you will have god will start to fill you with his fullness overflowing uh so that it just flows out of you and nobody can stop it the fullness of god think what the fullness of god means that means we can tap into his power not ours i don't know if you're like me but i used to try to live the christian life on my own strength until i realized it's not about me so we tap into his power we can tap into his peace do we need peace today oh man do we ever we can tap into god's peace we can tap into his love into his wisdom we can tap into his understanding but we can't tap into the fullness of God until we learn to love God more and have the power to uh, allow that power to fill us. So Paul says, grow in Christ's love, grow in power, and when you do those two things, you will be fulfilled with the power of God. You see, the deeper we grow in our love for Jesus, the easier it will be to love others, even when they don't treat us well. And the deeper others grow in their love for Jesus, the more they will experience the joy, peace, and fulfillment that only he can have. So my prayer for you this week, and hopefully your prayer for you this week, is that you will learn to grow in the love of Jesus sense his love for you. Paul says his love is so high we can't fathom the height or the depths or the width of it. Jesus' love for you is more than you can imagine. So ask him to help you love him more. But also whatever struggle you're going through today, gang, uh, Jesus loves you and he doesn't care about your past. He doesn't care about what you're in the middle of right now as far as his love for you. That doesn't change his love for you. So allow him to show you his love in a great and mighty way so that you can experience that and grow in his power. Thanks for uh, sharing, stopping in tonight. Uh, have a great rest of your week. I'm going to close in prayer and then uh, we'll we'll be done. Question or favor that I have to ask of you is if you wouldn't mind just uh, sharing this on your timeline. Uh, letting other people know that it's here. i uh, love to have that. We'll talk to you later. Have a great night. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, I thank you for today. I pray now for your uh, blessing on uh, whoever's listening, who is li listening now or whoever will be listening. I pray that you would show them your love, your grace, and your mercy. And I pray these things in your mighty and holy name. You're truly a good God, and thank you so much. 
in your name. Amen. Thanks for stopping, everybody, and uh, we'll talk to you next week. By the way, if you don't have a church to attend on Sunday, Zion, 10 o'clock. Praise starts at 10. Love to have you join us either online or in person. Have a great day.